Yeah. Welcome everyone to the film vault. That is Anderson. I'm Brother Jerry Hope. That's me. That is me. That is me. And the listeners can actually see what's happening. I was gonna say that is me. They, they can't see Anderson's fuck up. Hey man, you okay? You need some more coffee? Hey, you just did that to me like moments ago. So fuck sure. yourself hard. <laughs> I, I didn't want to start the show. Me on. I didn't want to start the show this uh, aggressive, but Jesus Christ, Bri Bri. Hey, I, I did call you on well, that. Brian gets mad because he's the technical guy. So when that gets <laughs> yeah, <fucked> yeah. up. <laughs> people associate me with buttons and drops. You're pushing mine right now. I can tell you that. Hey, can I speak to you for a second? A, a friend of friend. Hmm. About you know this is this is a safe space we can. Um, it's not safe at <laughs> all. <laughs> what gave you that impression? This is a space where we can we can talk freely. Yes, no, yes. no one's listening. That, that is true. That's true. Uh, you know, can I, can I say somebody has a friend? Oh, it, it really it really bothered me <gasps> when you. Uh, oh no! When you gave away the whiskey and rye and bourbon that was meant for us specifically with our names on it, such to the point that Tyler even said to himself, Anderson and Brian, what the hell? Because uh-huh. it's ours, and that should have been shared by us. And instead, you, in your urgency to drink, mm. had to crack it open. And you're thinking, hey, Brian's not drinking these. Can you, Brian can you is, set, Brian set up is your, your is drinking these days. Your, your bit here? It's a, it's not a bit. I'm no, genuinely set it up upset. A little, set it up a little bit so people have can an, you, uh, an can idea. Can you plug the after disaster? Have, okay, yeah, I guess we did the, the film vault watch along party. Yes. Anderson, uh, at his P.O. box, was sent some uh, a, a wide variety of uh, whiskeys, ryes, and yes. bourbons. Uh, curated by one Mr. Brian McCulley. Yeah. And uh, we broke into those on the uh, watch party, which, mm-hmm. by the way, a huge success. Oh, yes. Huge success. It was a very, very fun uh, time. I think it's the best one we've done so far. Still working out the kinks. I tried to use my GH5, which was not the best camera for that, it turns out. We're it's got no internal battery. It, it, I got the double battery pack on there, but it's just it's showing the uh, mm. the on screen stuff like with the grid and whatnot. So it's just it's not ideal for our purposes over Kink, there. The kinks are being slowly but surely ironed out. This is probably our smoothest one, the best watch along we've done yeah, so far. It was good. And, uh, part of that had to do, a lot of that had to do with the fact that we did it in a comfortable space, yes. with, uh, air conditioning, and a nice couch and whiskey and whiskey. So yeah, it was funny you should us. bring this up. Um, I have thought about this quite a bit since you and I drank it uh, last mm. week. And that is, God damn, I need to reach out to old Brian McCulley, who uh, was kind enough to send us over all those whiskeys mm. for his episode, which was the, the mouth-watering beer uh, scene. Are you being uh, attacked scenes. by animals? A fly. Oh. Uh, an aggressive fly in your kitchen. Uh, and I ended up, now M- McCulley listens to both pro. This is so boring for everybody. What Your instincts are terrible. Why we're starting the show off with this is just ridiculous. ridiculous. But I feel like M- McCulley has sent plenty of uh, care packages and <laughs> alcohol and beers and whatnot over the years uh he's one of our greatest supporters i, I met him down in san diego a great guy talked to him a number shit. of times yeah he's one of the good guys and uh i know that he listens to uh, the after disaster uh, as much as he listens to this program mm-hmm. you have been on heavy liver medications and watching your liver and not been able to drink with me for quite some time macaulay you saying that i couldn't wait to drink macaulay sent this Two months ago, probably. And your uh, your uh, 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 your unredeemable uh, urge to get crunk. Oh, it was, it was in my closet for like a better part of two Good months. Yes, yeah, so you hide it from any visitors. No, right, right. And then when uh, it's hard, to, to, it's hard to drink on the programs. When I got I got you over here, liver boy, right? And I got uh, 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 what's his name, Carano over there, Mister uh, Ten Year Sobriety guy. I was gonna say you're pointing at me. Yeah. I was like, I drink. How dare? <laughs> don't don't put tough. this on me. And then when I saw my window where. Uh, Mike Carano got the old COVID a couple weeks ago, and he was not on the program. And it was just, uh, oh, he's on the program, but he wasn't there in the, in the garage with us. I'm like, hey, it's our opportunity, uh, Ty Ty. Let's, uh, let's bust open these Macaulay's. And I knew that Macaulay would hear us drinking his, his booze and thanking him for it. But then I'm like, I don't know if I should have been drinking it with Brian, though, on the Patreon-only episode. I don't even know if he's part of the $10 and up level. So that's why I felt bad about Macaulay. Nothing to do with you. You had plenty of chance. It's actually making it worse. No, it does not at all. So, Brian, if you're listening, uh, Macaulay, that is better, Brian. I I'm call listening. Uh, yeah, I, I owe you an email, a conversation, and uh, thank you very much for the, uh, the whiskeys. This is, I had the last one last night <laughs> <laughs> all by myself, and it was uh, delightful. <laughs> this doesn't make it better. Uh, it's better for me. Did you did you think of the show at least? I did. I thought of the show. Were you doing research? Uh, I was doing research <laughs> for the show. All is well, yeah. That well. helps. That helps. And then I went to bed, and then I was uh, woken up. Uh, shortly after I went to bed, and I didn't get to bed until uh, after three, and I'm on three hours and forty five minutes oh of my. sleep, which you saw, right, Brad? Brad? Yeah. So you showed me your sleep app. Yes, three hours. Yeah. Even, three hours forty five minutes. I we'll get to movies. I commented and said that wasn't ideal. No, no, it's not ideal. Uh, there it is. I don't know if, if this is picking up, but three hours and forty five minutes. Mm-hmm. 
And it's because the boy of mine had his first nightmare, like a legitimate Ooh. nightmare. Came in, still crying a little bit, shaking. I said, I want to hear all about it tomorrow. Let's go to sleep. <laughs> and uh, turns out mm -hmm. he had a, a, a dream where Dada, that's me, was doing the film vault. Oh, no. With you. And then he and Tessa came into the radio studio oh, station, yeah, is what sure. he called it, to, to check on us. And I, you were very upset, and I was gone. Somebody came and kidnapped me. And he was very upset. He That's was how you know it's fantasy, because I was very upset. He was still crying. <laughs> 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 he was still crying. All right. So that uh, made it so that I'm not on a lot of sleep, all right? All right, you alluded to, uh, if you can see it, please explain. We got, we got cameras. Yeah, this we got the cameras. Uh, this will be available to watch in a matter of weeks. I think this week. I think we're really? just gonna put them up. Yeah, I don't want to like backload it too many. I have people. You know, right. We're gonna pu put them up. This will this will be a, uh, the third and fourth one we're doing here. I think or it's we're a gonna mistake. Why? I'm kidding. I don't care. We're gonna uh, record the uh, the Patreon and moving forward, we're gonna be putting our dumb mugs on the camera you uh, have a mug? on the show, and uh, it'll be on on our YouTube mm -hmm. channel, which you can subscribe to over there. And then, hey, you can watch along. You can listen along while you're at work. You open it on a tab. I understand a lot of people do this. Uh, you know, if something particular happens on the show, you can you can check it out and, and see what, what's going on. So it's so just another way to consume the program. Can and it lives uh, along with the uh, big juicy review of the week that I put out there in clip form. Yeah, and that's going to be just like that's going to be the video now, right? You should do that. It should uh, be I just could. audio. Yeah, because that would make no sense we, since we have video now. So, yes, the, the big juicy uh, pick of the week nice. uh, for the review, which uh, Avery cuts out. And then we're also going to start populating it with uh, actual, you know, best of moments. Thanks. Uh, I'm due in large part to our, our listener, Philip Crow, who can continues to send me Thank little you, uh, screenshots. That's fantastic. What uh, what will be the big, sexy, juicy review of the week this week? This week? You know, Bri Brian. Do I? How do you not know? I'm asking Avery. I think you might. It's a test. Mm. It's got three letters. <laughs> I don't know. I mean, that's the best one. But, I mean, 3,000 years of <laughs> yeah, longing is the big, so sex right? It's yeah. the relevant one. Hey, I should also mention that since doing uh, uh, the show on our own, since leaving the Orange Couch, uh, we obviously number our shows. We just don't make that public part of the mm. part of the title like many people do. Uh, this here episode that we're doing, demonic. Mm. Don't like. It's the six 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 episode Let's call it six. Episode R R. Let's do that. Hey, where do we start this week? Where do you, where do? You, uh, oh wait, speaking of fan fiction, oh, terrible. Speaking of YouTube, horrible start. I get that, guys. We're a little bit all over the place. I blame Brian. Uh, Logan's got a. Uh, a YouTube channel. I don't know that name. Which uh, he just launched because he's no longer with CNET. They did a, a mass a massive uh, restructuring, I guess, uh, HBO. Take it out of the garbage. <laughs> That's not the case. <laughs> and uh, he found himself an independent contractor suddenly, and he's making the most of it with all of the stuff that he's learned over there at CNET over the years. So I guess uh, he's got his own channel going. Uh, we will leave a link to that in the show notes. And uh, there's one, a collection of him reviewing... Uh, mm -hmm. Electric bikes over the last like year and a half. That's or right. That's right? his obsession. Yes, yeah, electric bike this, electric bike that. So, you ever watch Yo Gabba Gabba? I'm familiar, but I've never seen it. Atticus missed it, but we have a ritual. Oh, like it was like a previous generation. A little bit, and like I didn't really push it on him when he was young. Are you familiar with Yo Gabba Gabba? It was like mid. It was like 2010s, right? Like yeah, early 2010s. Right on there. Yeah. yeah. A well, little bit. Every morning we have a ritual, right? And summer's over now and we got school. And uh, I was trying to get him to land on a show that he could watch in the morning that we could both, you know, have him on in the background at least. Nothing too intense. Mm -hmm. no, no bullshit of, you know, kids opening things. And I'm like, fuck it. We're doing Yo Gabba Gabba. It's on the Roku channel. <laughs> it's right there. Dive in. Uh, he's going to watch this whether he likes it or not. And he's in. Yeah. Even though it's a little bit below. I don't know anything about it. It's like modern day Sesame Street, but they got like cool, like hot, hot heat. The Ting Tings <laughs> were on there this morning. And uh, it's, I guess it's created by punk rockers. And I think the Devo guys had something to do with it at one point. Anyways, the guy, the, the, you know, the black guy that runs it, he's like a uh, tall, skinny black guy. He's he wears like guy. a have you seen Have you seen that? I don't know. The guy who I'm talking about? No. He reminds me so much of Logan. He is oh. so Logan-like. I'm going to Google Yo Gabba Gabba. And his delivery. So if you've ever wondered what Logan is like, uh, ex-producer Logan. He's like a skinny black man with an afro. Oh, no, he's got like a big like uh, babushka hat. Like a, it's like a uh, hat. okay. You know, what I'm DJ about. Lance Rock. I guess that's him. Yeah, I'm only two weeks into this, uh, and I'm taking a shower half the time, and he's watching it. So, all right. I just wanted to say that because every time it's on, I'm like, oh, Logan. It reminds me of Logan. <laughs> okay, so yeah, check out Logan's channel. Yo, uh, Gabba Gabba. Yeah, Yo, Gabba Gabba. No, his oh. YouTube channel and uh, link to it uh, right there in all the show right. notes. Show I'm in. notes. 
All Congratulations, right. producer Logan, ex producer Logan, and let's hear our guest and fan flictions, yeah? Yeah, a little fan fiction compiled by the Bitchmerns. John Brown on Facebook, what Josiah saw. Still not sure what he saw, but I know what I saw, and it was disturbing. <laughs> Orion Jericho on Reddit, me time, laugh twice. That's all he said. That's all he That's said. <laughs> <laughs> Orion Jericho on Reddit, me time, laugh twice, colossal waste of time. Mitch Burns from this email. Watched Samaritan for Sylvester Stallone, and he was the only good thing about it. I'm shocked. Uh, a couple of interesting moments and some twists, but ultimately, this is really cheesy and a really bad script. Is I that guess you editorializing every No, nope, this is all the bitch murns. I Well, yeah, that was me being shocked. Okay, I see, guess that's what I'm saying. even with streaming, August is still a dumping ground. No, September is. August still got some good stuff there. Mitch September is, is the Mitch dumping. is making strong statements. It's Canadian in them. Making mistakes. <laughs> <laughs> a man named Mike on Instagram, 3,000 Years of Longing. A unique, interesting, and fantastical movie. I see why it's getting mixed reviews. The film makes some weird decisions that will turn off some people and really work for others. It's a fairy tale of sorts with plot points ranging from benign to exotic fantasy. You may want to avoid the marketing for this movie because it may not be what it seems. No. Visually, True. it's pretty dazzling with some questionable bits of CGI. The pacing is also a bit off kilter, but the variety of stories keeps things interesting. Overall, I found the message to be fairly thoughtful and the premise to be quite memorable. Mm. And lastly, Mike O'Mara on Facebook. I watched RRR. That was loud. The creators of the film took a nosedive from the top of the cocaine tree and railed every <laughs> branch on the way down. <laughs> I've never done cocaine, but I imagine this movie is what Brian imagines doing cocaine is like. <laughs> There's even a charismatic performance. I have that in my notes. From a white guy for Andy to root for lol. That's not me. That's Brian. That's really kind of your, that's your move. A little Andy Circus. Yeah, maybe you. Andy Circus, but I mean... Uh, uh, There's a couple of white guys there, and not nice. No white guys, Andy Circus, except for Andy. Mm -hmm. All right. All right, where, where are we going here? We're going uh, 3,000 years? Let's do 3,000 years. Whatever you want, bro. Let's talk a little 3,000 years. I wasn't prepared for this. 3,000 3, years 3,000 years longing. of longing is a 2022 film directed by George Miller. Remember a week ago when I thought it was uh, John Carpenter or John... No. No, fuck, what's his... Uh, you thought it was Cronenberg. Cronenberg. Is David he the guy Cronenberg. who uh, God damn it. directed that movie that wasn't as good as World War Z? Uh, it, it's like on average. It's like on par. Uh, yeah, George Miller is that guy. And he's the guy uh, that directed Happy Feet is what you're talking that's about, That's right? true. Yeah. Tilda Swinton and Id Idris Elba, a co-star in this film. I thought it was funny because I, I know this had to be a result of like agent negotiation when they introduced their names at the beginning. One name was higher, but one name came first. That's not the case, Brian. Really? I don't, don't think, think so. so. I don't think that I they're know the back and forth. There's a legendary story about uh, the makers of Opus One Wine, and they're both legendary winemakers. Well, I mean, winemakers are and a they're little like bit different. One's like, my name has to go first, and they're like, my name has to go higher. So they yeah. ran into it. And then they also both kind of met, right? What You're talking mean? about Tilda Swinton and oh Idris, yeah. like yeah. The, the names on, on the credit. I don't think that that's also why it's Brian and Anderson.com. That's right. Because he. <laughs> it's not. It's Anderson and Brian, which was weird. <laughs> I, actually, when, my, my, when I first. Heard that he created that uh, URL. I'm like, oh, Brian and Anderson was already taken. <laughs> <laughs> and I forget what your response that, was. No, br and Anderson seemed weird. Ah. Like, like uh, contextually. He tried like it first, though, obviously, visually. right? I oh, yeah. wrestled with it. Wrestled, grappled. Uh, yeah, I believe I tried to convince myself so many times. The price, I, the price tag was too high to bid. I can tell you in my own uh, uh, dealings, uh, I've signed contracts in dealing with making my movie and mm -hmm. with some of the people that were going to be like, you know, above the line players and, and names and s agents do say hey your name is not allowed to be on screen any longer than their name there type thing but i don't know if it was a back and forth maybe maybe you're on to something i doubt it though so you you think that the uh agents for idris alba and tillis wooden aren't as uh bulldogish about their clients as yours were but i mean wh what you're saying is one came on first but then the other one came no, on no, higher w one one was first and one was higher even though it was like left to right you know what i mean yeah it was like one was up here and one was down here. Yeah, but the whatever came on first was lower and then yeah. the other one was higher. Yeah. What? Yeah. I'm just saying. Mm -hmm. 3,000 years long, 72% on Rotten Tomatoes in theaters now. Uh, Anderson, uh, thoughts on 3,000 years? Did you? So, what were your expectations going in? Low, this? low, low, As low. As were mine. Yeah, I was thinking I was going to get like some Jupiter ascending shit, like a mess, um, maybe like Atlas, uh, Cloud Atlas, which I know you mm -hmm. like a lot, but like you know, big ideas that weren't really thought through all the way. 
And uh, what I got was much more reined in, much more reasonable, mm. and much more enjoyable. And it's 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 not been a full forty eight hours since I've seen it, and I'm still it's still settling in. And I and it's one of those movies where I think I'm going to like it more a few weeks from now than I do even right now. I think I'm similar to you in the sense that it, it in a way it exceeded my expectations, but also in a way. So we need to talk about the pacing because this is a slow yeah. movie. So I, I'm glad you brought that up because the inherent problem with movies like this, stories about stories, because mm -hmm. that's what this whole right. thing is, is an, a, a love letter to stories, which Myth, is kind mythology. of mythology. Mythology, but I mean stories, no, I know, right? I'm saying the same thing. And when you have people telling stories, there's not a whole lot of back and forth dialogue. No, it is It is sitting and talking. Uh, it's a lot of talking. Monologue-ish. With some, you know, reenactments i guess well done reenactments mm. of seeing the past but that's the first act and a half or so and mm. that is the pacing issue and then it starts to ramp up a little bit and they abandon that to a to a degree and at the end of the day it was kind of closer to like uh shape of water <laughs> oh that's interesting yeah yeah i guess i was anticipating and it, it's like it takes a brief look at humanity uh where we've been where we are and uh, what the uh <laughs> Well, where we're going, See, maybe, and it's not, but it wasn't trying to get too heady or too sanctimonious. I didn't feel. I didn't feel like it was trying to preach too much. Well, I guess we're splitting hairs. You're right. I don't feel feel like it was trying to preach. I thought it was exceptionally heady. Like it was a very intellectual movie, and 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 they don't, to my recollection, they didn't really. Ch the movie is basically told this guy's three thousand year life uh, over the course of like four stories, right? Three. Is it? Oh. Everything in this movie is three. Everything is three, oh. three, three everywhere. Because he gets trapped in the bottle like twenty five hundred years. Yeah. I don't know where the extra five hundred go, but perhaps that's where we are now. Well, he I was he was floating around the castle for a hundred years. Idris. Yeah, he claimed that's what he said. I'm a jinn. He's a jinn. I'm a jinn. That's where Ginny, genie comes from, I assume. Twenty minutes into this movie, I'm like, what the fuck are they doing? Why is this going to be R rated? Like, this is a, a a movie I should be at with a child. Like, this <laughs> this is <laughs> not for me. <laughs> And then it starts taking some turns and making some decisions, and then like, you know, by the time everything's said and done, you see tons, like literally tons of naked flesh, like aerials the literally size of, of <laughs> literally tons, like personal pieces are too small to do it justice. Like these these areolas that you see are are massive, and they're and they're not makeup. Can I be honest with you? The only part of the film I was inspired to do some more research on the was little the little brother's goop on his hand when he was in the. Uh, no, it was on the Ibrahim. Uh, turns out he really did fancy larger women. Yeah, and he, he made it. He instructed his uh, like his sheriffs or his lords or whatever to bring him the largest women in in his uh, in his kingdom. I like that. So there's like some. Good for him. Where's I just that, that movie? I mean, well, it's kind of here. It's in here. Oh. It's in a sable prison. <laughs> yeah. What was on his hand? That got on the mom's hand. That was very upsetting, was Brian. Upsetting. What was that? Was know, that baby was, juice? Was some goo. Was it supposed to be baby juice? I, well, I mean, I think that's the subtext. I don't think it was the actual scene. Oh, like they didn't use that actually as a prop. Thanks no, I don't mean it was. <laughs> I don't mean the text of the of the. Oh, movie I see. Was implying that it was. It was semen. some kind of like it was metaphorical, like honey or something that there is. Looks like it was boring to me. Land like, of milk. Like and that would have been a boring. Even though he was getting all the sexual pleasure he wanted, like they were just sitting around, they weren't talking, they were fanning themselves. It looked really boring in that cage. Speaking of boring, uh. outside of a few bursts of like inspired moments this movie is pretty boring i want to call it boring it's slow paced it's deliberately placed paced but the what will stick with me is pleasant and i like and there's some good there's a couple of there's a few good moments in here it's the kind of movie where you see the trailer after you see it and you're like oh you know what this is way better than the trailer <laughs> but i'm i'm liking the movie yeah. now more at revisiting the little parts that i like in the trailer i really like how the trailer was cut completely out of order and they're using stuff from the end of the movie to explain who she is which it's dicey, but they get away with it. This is a much better movie than I was anticipating. I was uh, led to believe that it was going to be just absolute trash from early reports as well mm. as the trailer, which looked like absolute trash. Yeah, yeah I, I, I'm. this is the flimsiest three stars I've ever given, I'm but I, I think it's above average. It's competently made. Well, then it's three and a half. No, no. It's you barely, just said it's, it's barely three. You, you said it's, it's, it's that, that third The third star is flickering. You said a, above average. A, as so. though the light bulb is loose. Three is, three is literally average, is, isn't it? A two and a half, I guess. Yeah, two and a half would be right down the middle of this one. But I, I don't I don't hedge my bets like that. I, I would say two and a half is like a D. I, I would say a C is three stars, no? Yeah, is a three stars is like a slightly above average movie, a passable movie. Hmm. I was thinking of it as average. I always think three stars is average. Mm -hmm. Yeah. 
Yeah. I'm going to feel that way, too. You know what I mean? In my rating, three stars falls just on the positive side. <coughs> just on the positive side. I give this three and a half stars. I think this is... Uh, I also love the fact that it's a story we've all heard a thousand times. We don't need another story like this, yet they brought some kind of some new stuff I mean, stuff literally, to it. This, is, these are historic, this is historical fiction. I like uh, the old Tilda Swinton. She's great. And I love Idris Elba. Did, Idris Elba was great. He I enjoyed fantastic. them together. In fact, even the ending with them was very... Uh, all right, careful. What are you doing there? Enjoyable. All right, okay. This, w- this is a movie that it, it could have been really, really good, I think. Mm. But oddly enough, a lot of the time those movies that could have been great, they just missed the mark, piss me off. This mm. one didn't really piss me off. It's just, it was, it's it's a children's movie for adults mm. that worked way better than I expected it to. And you could do way worse. And with all of the derivative bullshit out there, this is derivative, but at least it's new derivatives. <laughs> you know what I mean? It's I like a new take. It. It's a new take on. On a 3,000 year old story? Yeah. It's a new take. Ibrahim. Mm-hmm. He liked him big. He liked him big. Yeah. He can apologize. He apparently, apparently, he did father many many uh, sires. They easily he sired many children. Made this a children's movie, mm-hmm. which would have made a whole lot more money and probably made people happier. <laughs> <laughs> George you're Miller could have just. You saying there's children's version of this that exists? It could, could have, probably should have, maybe. It yeah. might have been a smarter, smarter move here. Full disclosure: I took Tessa with this. I mean, I, I was thinking was about confused. that. When the man's head came <laughs> off and became a spider and then burst into a thousand <laughs> little spiders, I'm like, this is the kind of shit my dad and I would have been watching when I was around six in the theater. <laughs> <laughs> and then they trying to tell you it's not real. <laughs> it's not real. <laughs> it's just CGI. CGI. He ends up at the bottom of the ocean a lot. Yeah. That one bitch did not like her. The big one. She didn't know what to do. She was very upset. She was caught off guard. Yes. Okay, we got we to gotta stop talking about this. But yeah, I... I it's the kind of... I, there, now, I saw it in the... I, AMC Prime Theater, which you know, they, they do pretty good things with the old Dolby sound I over there in the I seats. I did I. A couple scenes where they really leaned on that, much like Beast, the last Idris Elba movie we saw just last week. Uh, however, f- other than those couple scenes where they really leaned on the Dolby sound, I was thinking this is like a movie you watch in bed at home. You don't need oh, I disagree. to be watching this in the theater. And really? I know that that's blasphemy and it's wrong to say, especially as somebody who loves the theater, but... No, this is the kind of movie. There was so much <laughs> storytelling. Oh, I disagree. There's, this is a this is grandeur. This is like a, literally an epic. But it didn't earn it. As I agree, as that, but I'm telling you what the goes. ambitions are. I think that yeah, I think it would have actually been better consumed at home, which is blasphemy. I get that. I can't believe you're saying that. However, one movie that I will jump at <laughs> to see in the theater, given the opportunity, is Rise, Roar. Revolt. Do you want to do you want to save the best for last? Are you going to say the best now? Because you've been uh, middling with this. The best movie. of the you've week. Been, you've been suggesting this is a middling movie. I know. I did. I did not do such a thing. I feel like you did. I may have thought that initially. Oh really? No. Not God true. damn. Not it. true. Not true. I um, wanted your initial takes on this because this reminds me of uh, your Fury Road take. Let's uh, save the best oh, for last. Oh, bri, bri, you foolish, foolish man. Up next, RRR, 2022. Wait, stop it. (laughs) (laughs) I see what you did there with the misdirect. I see that. That was pretty good. All right, you want to see? You want to talk Squeal? Squeal! Squeal is a 2022 film directed by Ike uh, Larapician. 89% of Rotten Tomatoes. This, uh, we didn't, we didn't even recap the plot of the 3,000 years. He's a gin. She finds him. He he offers her three wishes and then tells his entire fucking life story to her. In real time. Because she's a storyteller. And uh, and she 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 eats, she she slurps it down with a spoon. She loves his stories, and she she's lonely. Does uh, George have a fixation with larger women? Because there's some in Fury Road too. I don't want to say what I think because that would come off as insensitive. <laughs> what do you think? <laughs> Turn the mics on. Patreon spoilers. <laughs> yeah, maybe we should do a spoiler. <laughs> <laughs> Our most insensitive spoilers yet. Yeah, yeah. I I don't know if that'd be true. <laughs> What do you think? Uh, I'm not. I don't know. This is your little <laughs> thing you love to do. You love me to look bad. You love to goat me into it. You even, you even like to take the abuse. You like to take a hit from me if it makes me look like the jerk. And I, I recognize that you do that all the time. What do you think? Mm-hmm. I know that your radio instincts are so good that if I bring something up, you have to pay it off. I'm so not going to. I'm not going to step in shit just to amuse <laughs> you or to like prove my instincts. What are your thoughts about George Miller and Fountain? I think he probably enjoys their uh, their grandeur and finds them beautiful. Mm. I think he's a shallow Hal character. That wasn't that. <laughs> <laughs> that wasn't that controversial. <laughs> what? That wasn't that controversial. <laughs> mm. That's kind of empowering. 
that's a second shallow hell uh, 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 reference on this program mm. uh, in a week. Well, I mean, it was on the uh, the, the Patreon only ten dollar uh, watch along. Type Which you can mention. get at patreon.com slash the film bros. Yes. Oh, also, guys, I should say this. For that level, we've been having massive issues with uh, people getting, like, a, because of fucking Patreon being just a little, uh, Patreon's Stupid a little bit behind dicks. the curve. A lot of back and forth with me and Patreon trying to figure out uh, the insanity that they have, the way that it's set up, so that if uh, people were getting uh, the, the higher level, they were actually getting less as a result because of the way Patreon's set up. Weak. It was going to take me about average 200 hours or so to uh, fix the uh, the issue that's reasonable. I have found a new way to do it on the app, which takes me way less time. It's taking me about five or six hours. I've already put a couple hours oh. into this, uh, so you guys are getting uh, by by the end of the month. You guys will have everything that everyone else has, as well as the extra stuff. So and this is proactive. So if someone were to join uh, next week, they'll have all the content. You won't have to go back and help them out too. Yeah, it's yeah. Going yeah. forward, it's going all going forward. And I went back and I did a little re- digging, and I didn't even realize. But uh, before my time as producer, when Logan was producer, like he kept things under lock and key, and like he, things were expiring on Patreon. So though it, it goes back only so long, so that you know the archives are always getting uh, re-upped and and updated. And uh, we have many many shows, and there are many of which you can listen to. And I recommend listening to them at one and a half times just to. Make it quicker. Email Anderson directly if you're having trouble. Yeah, it's fine. Do it. Go ahead. I'm, I'm used to uh, doing all of the work that Brian refuses to help with. It's, it's too easy for him. Good. What's too easy? The tech stuff. Yeah, it really is. It'd be a waste of his time. That's right. It's beneath me. <laughs> well, it is easy because he just he, he controls pace, his response, <laughs> which is let me talk to my AV guy and get back to you, and then never thinks about it again. Just like he does with his reviews and Rotten Tomatoes. Do oh, you realize true. if the I cut, did cut such cut. rudimentary work... The the brain the the loss of brain power <laughs> would be like I'm I'm losing at this as opposed to just doing nothing napping at least then I can imagine things. So you're like the shark that doesn't bother with the small fish. That's right. It would take too there's much energy. The, the, yeah, exactly. I there's, see. there's a net loss. Very good. Yeah. It's like the president arranging the seats at the State of the Union, waste of his time. R- president doing who with what? No, arranging the seats at the State of the Union, waste of his time. That's Why? Right. I don't like get it. like the captain uh, working the uh, the buffet on the cruise yeah. ship. This is beneath me. Mm-hmm. I have people to do this. Oh, I see. Like the president won't actually. I would though, because I'm a fucking troll freak. I'm like, I, I don't, don't want to look at that guy. <laughs> <laughs> you'd be, uh, you be the Teddy Roosevelt standing outside the White House. Oh, just, just shaking everybody. every fucking hand. Eighteen hours or so, I think he put in. Eighteen hours. He just shook every person's hand who was in line to shake his hand. Is that movie coming out this year? I don't think it's ever coming out. Oh, I thought it was. Mm. They've been talking S- about that movie for literally like twelve years now. Squeal. This is 2022 film directed by Ike Larapetian. 89% of Rotten Tomatoes, 8 out of 9 positive reviews. Uh, 85 minutes long. This is a brisk jaunt. <laughs> this is a, uh, I think, it, okay, I, there, I don't know if there even is a IMDb entry for this. I had a hard time. Is. Okay. Oh, yeah, it's because it's called Samuel's Travels is what oh, it's is it officially really? called. Okay, because I, I had to look at something called The Movie Database. Here's like what it was you like do. Bobo <laughs> IMDb. Here, here's what you do if you have that problem. Because I have that problem sometimes when looking up some of these more obscure movies or movies that are, have alternate titles. Is you you find the director's name yeah, and then I you search, you know, reverse engineer it. As far as I could tell, this is a Latvian movie. It is. It is a Latvian yeah. film. Uh, this opens with a prominent shot of a uh, pig's butthole. Yeah, it is. <laughs> I'm kind of let you know a tra- what you're going A into. tracking shot. And you made me watch RRR instead. Well, I mean. Oh, you watched Oh, you watched it. That's right. Oh, I'm so excited. <laughs> That's why I've been texting tigers all week. <laughs> I didn't. I only saw one text from me that said tiger. Okay. Uh, yeah, I mean, if you're if you're just staring at the butthole and not the beauty of the shot and a little bait. <laughs> oh, it's hard to miss. Pick, I mean, it dominates the screen. That's what you see when you see the rear end of a lot of animals. I had to you rewind it a few times. Uh-huh. All right. So yeah, Babe, picking the city. He's he's cruising through. Glad this, I'm glad the city worker got to hear that. And then hear Brian say, "Get out yeah. on his posh right. uh-huh. pedestal." <laughs> That's right. He just sees a bald white man saying get out to him as he walks by his house. Ironically, yeah. taking get out back. Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah, so this uh, so this is about a... Um, you know the problem with Nope? It just occurred to me today as I was watching it. <laughs> looking at an many old, problems. an old, old uh, billboard that's still up. First mm-hmm. of all, the title is just a little bit too cutesy. Like it's trying to be like a, a meme mm-hmm. with its title almost, right? With the, with the billboard. But if they just made it a period piece, like if, I don't know if we talked about this at the time, but if it took place like the 40s or you know before technology... Mm-hmm. It would have been way more plausible. Oh, it was like about the dad who was like actually running the the the, the ranch. No, no, no. Like you, you just make the dad like all the whole family's the same age, but they're like the, the time is the nineteen forties before. Okay, you know what I mean. It would yeah. 
I guess they wouldn't have had those things. That's right. They wouldn't have had the flappy they flag guys. The, uh, yeah, the, the inflatables that are caused out of car, uh, used car lots. I just couldn't believe the technology wanted to pick this up and the, the absurdity of people with their cameras, but they're not sharing it. It was just absurd. It's a good Don't point. You like haven't seen it. Uh, it's out right. in the middle of the goddamn nowhere. You could just, it's, it's no reason you can't. It's well, I'm, what I'm saying is, isn't like you have to do a lot of set dressing for like, oh, you know, I see, I see. downtown LA. That's right. No. Right. That, Sorry, I just had, I had another thought on Nope. Let's move on. <laughs> so the main character of uh, Squeal, uh, known as The Foreigner. Samuel. But they only call him The Foreigner, though, right? His name is Samuel, and the okay. title of the fucking movie, the alternate title, or the title over everywhere except for the United States, is uh, Samuel's Travels, because it's in his So travels. Samuel, a.k.a. The Foreigner. He's a f- uh, The Foreigner. The right. working title was Pig's Butt, huh? Yes. It's moving moving true. Pig's Butt. True to its, true to its name. Uh, it uh, he he's uh, it opens the film. He is uh, driving through uh, yeah, the remote Eastern Europe, looking for. Do we ever find? Does he ever explicitly say it's his dad? No. Because uh, in all the summaries I read, it's like a man looking for his dad. I'm like, are we supposed to just? Know oh that? no no, he does. Yeah, oh, I, th- does. I thought you meant like, is that patched up by the? Oh end? no, I know it's not wrapped up. But I'm saying. Does he say I'm looking for my father? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, okay, the, like the very first thing he says, I think, is oh, like, okay. "Do you know this man?" He's I my saw, that, yeah, the guy who or, speaks or, English. Or the narrator says it because this movie is narrated oh. much like uh, Babe, Big in the City is, and Babe, the original is. It's, it's, it's got a very wry voice. It's, hey, there's the p- the pig butthole. I'm just it just came up on my nice. on my screen. Hey, uh, easy, it. Don't uh, break your neck crane when you see it. <laughs> Go ahead, Brian. I assigned this to you, so you. And so continue. Samuel uh, is uh, traipsing across. Uh, the remote lands, uh, the forest lands of Eastern Europe, looking for his father. Mm-hmm. Uh, he he approaches. Uh, he approach. He's in a rented car. We have to presume he he is. A, he <laughs> <laughs> yes, I don't think it's his personal vehicle. However, it might be not important <laughs> at all. <laughs> I feel I, like that's important. I enjoyed that obscure detail. It does. It does not lead into the story, other than maybe he gets late fees. <laughs> It might be selling some listeners. Can you imagine the late fees you racked up on that thing? <laughs> because Samuel's travels don't go as planned. Samuel, um, uh, instead of finding... <laughs> Presumably rented. Most likely with Hertz. Perhaps Enterprise. It doesn't say who it is. Uh, it could be Alamo. Most likely from the airport. I wonder if he got the insurance uh, plan. Or if he used <laughs> his own insurance. I hope so. <laughs> Because uh, he doesn't find his father at first. He finds instead a pig crossing the road. Yes. The same pig, mm-hmm. presumably. It is the same pig. He's the pig that leads through the entire movie. He should be called Samuel. He could have been. What if the pig was Samuel? So the narrator's helping us along here, and the pig is out. He's free. He got away from his owner, and he's out like uh, foraging in the forest. And the owner's very concerned, as as are we, the viewer, if you have any caring for uh, you know small animals and whatnot, that the, uh, the wolves are going to like, devour this poor little pig limb from limb, eat him alive. Uh, the, the wolves are uh, mentioned quite a bit in this movie. The whole movie is a metaphor for either this or that, depending on how you interpret it. And uh, we only get to see the wolves' eyes once, like uh, looming in the uh, the shadows of the forest, which is... I wanted more wolves, to be honest, but... Uh, you, then didn't, you didn't get enough out of this movie? Then uh, the uh, the little piggy is found by oh. the traveler, uh-huh. Samuel. The, uh, the traveler in his presumably rented car of happens the upon the piggy. Yes, he finds it with his bumper, the front of his bumper, uh, by hitting the poor little piggy. And it's it's fairly gruesome because the piggy's bleeding from the nose. He's in the back seat. It's, n- it's a snout, I understand. It's a snout, okay. And Samuel, uh, the traveler, feels like he's quite the uh, the hero because he's like, you owe me one. He's not too concerned that this this pig has probably got massive internal bleeding and whatnot. To him, it's just some feral pig. Ah, no, he was really upset about it at first, and then he throws him in the back right, seat. Right, but I'm saying he doesn't he doesn't associate this with... A pet. Somebody's or, yeah, pet. Somebody, yeah. And then uh, he gets it back to the farm where it came from by chance. Mm. And, uh, and then we hear from the narrator that the pig is not too pleased to be back uh, with uh, this, th- this very uh, upsetting family who mm. treats him poorly. And they're hill people. I guess, yeah, they're, they're, they're like bushers, bush people, mm. right? Woods, yeah, it's the yeah. Is the there a Latvian term for this? I don't know. Is there? Why am I watching a trailer for Woods? Why are you watching this? I don't know. I was very confused why there was a hot blonde it's woman so and a sniper good. and a this pig movie, movie that I'm watching. The trailer for right now is so goddamn good. It was in top ten, I think, just last year. Revenge, so fucking good. Why is Revenge? Playing is that the B.J. Novak movie? No. Didn't he oh, make? You a still movie haven't seen Revenge, have you? Didn't, didn't he make a movie titled something very similar? Uh, probably. Vengeance yeah. or something. I think we're seeing Vengeance very soon. Oh. Yeah. I think it's good to be assigned. All right, we're all over the place. Why were they showing maybe the same producer produced? So Samuel. Huh. Revenge is great. You have not seen Revenge? You're going to already watch Revenge this week. Samuel returns the pig to its owner. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Turns out that um, they're, they're proprietor <laughs> of, of a farm. Yes. 
things go awry. <laughs> they do. This farm. I don't think he's getting his deposit back on his the daughter. The farmer's daughter mm-hmm. and uh, the farmer himself, as well as the neighbor who's in love with the farmer's yeah. daughter, they all want Samuel to become their new pig. Well, they, 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 he, they, they, uh, she offers him uh, a, a room to sleep in uh, in their house, and he awakens to uh, men in his room w- with guns. Mm-hmm. Mm. Ordering him to remove his clothes. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And, uh, and, then, and then he's chained up. And it's a story we've seen plenty of times before. Yeah. However. Is it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Chained and unchained. Mm-hmm. And, uh, uh, to an extent, uh, uh, human centipede. I mean, there's, there's plenty. You're of right. There were human centipede vibes. Too. Prisoners. I mean, there's a lot of movies where Even they keep uh, people captive. What's the one we just saw? Even um, the fucking. Oh, I, just, I just had him ahead. And uh, you almost see Samuel's butthole a few times here, too. He's, he is debased of, of human <laughs> dignity and turned into a, a, a farm animal. <laughs> and really, the question is, like, like what do oh, you Oh, the one we did for the green rain or green whatever. Green room? No, the one where they're in the, the oh, jungle. Gr- green inferno? Yeah, it's got it's elements Ross. of that. No. Held against your will and debased by uh, the locals. To that extent, yes. Yeah. Absolutely. Uh, very, very broad <laughs> No, yeah, you're right. Yeah, turn, I turned quick. Mm. Button hooked. Literally, button hooked on your... That's right. All right, so uh, here we go. What do you think this movie's about? I think that that's kind of the main thing here. Like, wh- However, like whatever the most... W- whatever you're picking up is kind of tells you like where your heart is, I guess. I th- uh, much like a Serbian film, I wonder if there's some local uh, Eastern European uh, subtext that I just can't understand. Uh, that said... I think it might just be more simple. Oh, really? Just straightforward? Like, m- men are animals and will debase themselves? Or just... Uh, or like not men, but like a man is an animal. It might know. be like a pro-vegan movie, uh-huh. and I think that it might be the biggest message is oh like really? this is what it's like to be a farm animal and to be livestock yeah. and to be treated this way. Can That's you imagine right. the plight of livestock? Or or it's more about like people staying in abusive relationships mm-hmm. and like you know and wor- and terrible working conditions. Right. It could be maybe it's both of those things that they're going after. Because at a point, uh, should I say Samuel has uh, a chance to uh, make his escape, but uh, makes a choice that maybe you or I wouldn't make. Yeah, it was an interesting choice. I did see Stockholm Syndrome come up on a couple of reviews. I liked this movie. Didn't love this movie. Wanted more from this movie. Mm-hmm. Uh, I assigned it to you blind. I had not seen it yet. And uh, I kind of wish that I assigned you something mm-hmm. else, to be honest. I, I did not love this movie. It's hard to enjoy. It's not the type of movie you enjoy, but a lot of times those movies that you don't enjoy, you endure. At least it has a more of a lasting impact. Mm-hmm. It seemed to me, unless I am perhaps missing something much bigger, uh, it didn't have enough on the bone for me to talk about mm. or even really remember on the bone 10 years from now i don't know if i'm going to remember squeal even at the end of the year i may have to look up and see what this was no we're not with the title like that That's bribery right and all your well, i call it samuel visages of uh, uh, uh pig buttholes i call it samuel travels <laughs> <laughs> brian is that type of guy that if somebody were to refer to this as squeal like tomorrow <laughs> he would say you know it's actually called samuel you know Stravis. the original title <laughs> latvian latvian uh, anyone right. worth his salt knows this it's also a little bit tongue in cheek, wry, like it's kind of Eastern European Wes Anderson. Like it's not yeah. a whole bunch of colorful characters. That was one of the problems. I wanted more fun. I wanted right. more laugh. Like the, the Although, stuff that what was did you think when the, the, the young, ma- the, the son character basically be- became a dog? Acting as a dog? I like the two old guys that mm. turned out to be pieces of shit as well. Like everyone's a piece of shit in this mm. movie except for Samuel, who is also kind of a piece He's of shit. He's covered in shit. Yeah, so. Yeah, I just wanted more from this movie. He's covered in I love the premise. Lost in a remote part of Eastern Europe, Sam is a foreigner searching for his biological father, Lagsdens, where a minor road accident leads to a chance meeting with a pig, a farmer's pig, a pig's farm, a pig farmer's daughter, who captures him, making a slave, uh, making him a slave on the farm. Mm-hmm. Something along those lines. I read that probably out of order and not well. To be honest. He is uh, restrained by shackles. Well, his neck is shackled. Presumably, uh, shackles owned by the farmers, not rented. <laughs> All right, let's It'd move be on. a sweet irony if it was in the back of his rental car. Should we, uh, should we do a little feels before we get into... Yeah, let's do some feels. Why are we giving away feels? Why are we giving away feels? Did they pay for this? Yeah, they paid for this. Hey, what kind of comment is that, Ryan? What the fuck? What's wrong with you, huh? Hey, how much time we got on that card? Is it good? Uh, 7.45. Seven minutes and 45 seconds? We yeah, got to talk fast. Yeah, hustle. Let's start talking fast. Fails. Fails. Uh, CBD. We, we really like the CBD. Uh, it's good. <laughs> oh, we're going to take a break. <laughs> Probably a better decision.
this is actually helpful. I'm glad that my, my wife is in the uh, recording studio. Christy, can you verify with him a simple, loud yes or no? Uh, do I, in fact, use Feels uh, Premium CBD every night? Every night. That wasn't a yes or no. Did you guys uh, rehearse that? No, it was, no, it was not rehearsed. Had we rehearsed it, I would have demanded she answered yes or no. She hit her mark, though. That's true. So, you know, we're, we're not starting from zero. Bri Bri uses it to sleep. I use it for my, uh, I don't want to call it crippling anxiety, but uh, you know what? It's been pretty bad lately, and CBD uh, feels in particular is, uh, it really takes the edge. Because you can't have a drink in the morning, right? No. Uh, that would no. be wrong. No. That's, that's, uh, so that's the old Andy. That's, that's how I would uh, take mm. care of uh, any issues that I had in the past. Now I, I do it much more responsibly. And uh, the mints, they're a great way to... Uh, Freshen your breath as well as just, they calm me down a little bit. And they make you go to sleep. They don't make me go to sleep. They make me focus. They they don't make me go to sleep per se. I should refine it and say they just kind of ease. Plus, I do it at the end of the day where I'm already tired. But they kind of ease me into a state of relaxation. Yeah, I do it like late morning a lot of the time. Where like Sometimes I go to the gym and I'm still feeling like, oh, God. Like my mind is just going Mm. a thousand places at once. Like, I I got some issues. In goes the mint. In goes the mint. Yeah. Good for Jillian's sure. actually to the point where she's like, honey, just take a take a feels, would you? I'm like, all right, honey. That's uh, the way she calms me down. That'd be like music tames the savage beast. Yeah, no, no. Uh, Guys, you too can start feeling better with feels. Become a member today by going to feels.com slash TFB. And you'll get 50% off your first order with free shipping. That's F-E-A-L-S dot com slash TFB to become a member. You get that 50% automatically taken off your first order with the free shipping feels. Dot com slash TFB. We've saved the best for last. Yes, uh, I'm glad that you agree, bro, bro. However, this is a tough week for me to be impressed that you would agree. Why? That RRR is because, uh, you know, with the gin movie, I am the gin. Oh, I see. The, the bar is low. Yeah, the bar is low. Our, our part of would have been the best movie last week, too. Let me tell you this. You know, they, d- they do this with like in sports with phenoms, and it's like, hey, this this guy, uh, if he could be draft eligible this year, mm. he'd be number one number overall one pick. pick. Yeah. That's how I feel about RRR. Oh, yeah? It goes like this, Brian. And, I, and, and the, the, trajectory, fourth, the, the trajectory is not right. I understand that. However, if we look back to 2008, 14 yeah. years ago now, right? right? Uh, the three best action movies I have seen go like this in this order. Dark Knight, Fury Road, RRR. Wow. Now, I know it's going backwards. That's high company. But it is one of the three best action movies that I have seen. Maybe are you ever? cutting? Are you cutting it off w- from where you saw World War Z? Now, we also got no Avery sense. to watch no RRR. Yes. And uh, I hope you did not watch this like my foolish, foolish co-host did on your phone. No, I watched it in glorious surround sound. Nice. Think how much more I would have enjoyed it. Holy shit. This movie. All right. Guys RRR kick it off. is a 2022 <coughs> film written and directed by S.S. Rajamuli, uh, starring a boy. Uh, Kevin. Oh, no. Wait. What? Did I fuck this up? Oh, I put the stars of. Uh, look at that. The stars of Sofia, where this should go. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah. Here we go. Here we go. Oh, it's Rajamuli. I got him right here. Uh, <laughs> N.T. Rama Rao Jr., he plays Beam. Ram Sharan, he plays Raju, and uh, Ray Stevenson, who plays Governor Scott Buxton, who, dare I say, v- probably the best part of the movie. Which one is he? He's the o- old white guy. The old white guy? Because there's a number of old white guys. Some he of them he's less the, he's old. The, they're he's all he's the Lord. The Lord, okay. I, I thought you would like her more. Like I could picture you being married to her. She was really good. Yeah, I would imagine That's you liked really her quite a bit. That's insulting my wife, who was just here. I, I'm not, I'm, she's a beautiful woman. <laughs> That's all I'm saying. She's very white. Whiter than your wife, might so, so some might say. So hey. I think it's 100 percent real. I have never seen a My wife's a never been a lord or a lordess. I've never seen a full Bollywood movie uh in its entirety. But this is not And that continues Bollywood because this is not a Bollywood movie. This is actually called a considered a Tollywood movie. <coughs> and in my research, Bri Bri, I won't spend too much time on it, but uh it has opened my eyes to all the different types of Movies to come out of India. Indeed. Uh, I'm glad that you brought that up. Can I just tell you what I found? Mm-hmm. And feel free to jump in. This is a Hindi cinema, popularly known as Bollywood and formerly as Bombay cinema. That is the Indian Hindi language film industry based in Mumbai, formerly Bombay. Hence Bollywood, Bombay, But Hollywood. this is not a Bollywood movie. Correct. The, 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 I think Hindi cinema is the 
over overarching term, the popular term Bollywood used to refer to you mainstream Hindi. I did. I, th- I, I can't get away did. from it. Mainstream Hindi cinema is a portmanteau of Bombay and Hollywood. The industry is part of the larger Indian cinema, the world's largest by number of feature films produced. So I yeah, so this is Bollywood is a subset of larger Indian cinema. I tuned out. And that like maybe two minutes. And Tollywood refers to the whole thing. What is Tollywood? Is <laughs> <Isn't that laughs> Oh my God! Hollywood is <laughs> Bengali <laughs> film industry in West oh, Bengal. It's all that. different oh. regions. It's oh, okay. So there's there's Bollywood, which everyone knows. It's like sure. people believe it's ubiquitous with all Indian films. That's not the case. Bo- Bollywood, as you I think said somewhere in there, that's a Mumbai based uh, yes. Hindi language Formerly film Bombay. industry. Uh, Pollywood is Punjabi language film industry. You got the Lollywood over there, which is Udu Udu. Uh, and Punjabi films. Uh, you see where we're going here. Sure. Uh, we got Hollywood, Mollywood, Sandalwood, uh, Jollywood. Sandalwood. Uh, Assam, Assam, Assamese language film industry in Gu- Guwati, uh, Assam. I, I, there are, just on this one site that I found, 27 different woods at the back, at It'd the back like end uh, from, from India. It would be like if you broke out like... I don't know, Mumblecore or like Large Bon. What was the Large Bon? Dogma 95? Well, no, it would be like if every state had its oh, own. Yeah, every region had yeah. their own. Yeah, like New York Cinema, uh, Atlanta, whatever, wherever you find. Anyway. 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 RRR is like nothing I had ever seen before. This You're is. You're kidding. What? There's like nothing you've ever seen before? I've never seen anything like this where it's, it's Marvel, but mm. with Indian characters based on real life characters doing superhero things and it's done with such precision and with the score hitting on such levels and the cgi blending even though the cgi leaves you forgive it though because of the the creativity that goes into each action set piece I you know, it's I happening so quickly that you don't almost don't have time to settle on it everything you're in, saying in a good way in terms of the cgi exactly everything you guys are saying is correct however i feel foolish the most obvious comp by far is 300 this is a this is an indian version of 300 no. it's a highly stylized uh, fictionalized version of history but no but centering on battles and this and is beyond that because that's not this, this history like these two guys never even met like they took two real life guys but i mean i they guess in the machinations you're right but the, the they highly fictionalize like the, the 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 Spartan mythology, and that's what they're doing here. I, I love three hundred, so I, that's a compliment. I didn't for me. like three hundred, and three hundred was just too much like brachismo and that's machismo. What this is. And, but this is done tongue in cheek. This, yeah, it's self aware. These guys I agree fucking rule, and but they're, they're it's definitely tongue in cheek. But and wait, self-aware. what about the part where they they, they simultaneously jump? Off I watched the that for the and meet in the middle and grab hands. I watched that. That, that was three hundred. That was that was, that was the end the, of the cold the title cold open. scene. Yeah, that was that was forty five minutes into the movie. Oh really? And I, that was I, I where we finally got the title. Oh my god. I watched that scene four times, maybe five, because that's the only scene I can show Atticus, and we love it. We both watch it. I made Jillian watch it just today. I said, hey, you want to watch the uh, rescue scene again, buddy? He's like, yeah, Dad, the train scene. And we sat down to watch it. And it's so good. God damn it. It brings chills. So should we even bother? We should summarize the plot. Set up the plot. Just just for those of you who have not seen it yet, uh, it, it, it's got less, for me, I'd say less 300 and more like a Skittles ad or an Old Spice ad at times. Yes. Right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's like Old Spice, but done in the Tollywood fashion. Heroic. It's like Old Spice Mr. 300. And it's it's like it's like their version of Marvel movies, and I've seen that this director has made a number of movies, uh, and two of which before this are epics. Each one I think is three and a half hours long, and it's Bollywood a two parter. So I think it's like six hours or seven hours. And it, and I watched the trailers. Oh fuck yeah, higher rated than this one. Really? Oh no, where am I going to find the time? I must, I must. Holy shit, I love it. All the disclaimers at the top of the movie. I've never seen that before. It's just like letting you know, hey, this is all CGI. <laughs> yeah. None of these animals are in this movie. Yeah. None of them get killed. No Don't worry. <laughs> yeah, it was like it's 15 minutes of just disclaimers. It was, it was quite the a top. bit. Yeah. I had never seen anything like that. Uh, so many fucking extras. I've never seen that many extras, I don't think. Unbelievable. In front of a, 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 a lens. Or it wasn't even necessary. Were they the pyramid of people that no. was just a throwaway in the World montage? World War Z. So first 15 minutes in, and I haven't even thanked the listeners because this came to our attention sh- shamefully. Not from our own... You know, knowing about movies, which is a t- Brian, I'll, best. Let you, I'll let you off the off the hook. But I mean, I should have known about RR, even though it's been out for. A year. I knew about it. 
especially because it's been out for a couple years, but it just can't got released in the, the U.S. recently. Uh, there's just so many goddamn platforms. It's easy to miss stuff, especially like you know foreign language stuff that's not being fired at you. But the listeners, fuck yeah, guys! Because uh, in our top five movies of the year so far, it was number three on the listener list, and Brian and I are both like, "Or or or was that? What is that?" I think I'd heard of it. Stop your mouth. So I like it wasn't. Also, let me let me just say that what action aside, which this movie is chock full of rife. I'd say that the middle action sequence involving the animals is maybe top five action sequences I've ever seen. Maybe top two. There's it's so many great sequences. I, I thought the ta- the tandem fight at the end was my. See, that was gonna be my my. If I'm gonna, if I'm gonna uh, pick nits here, I was gonna say like it, it's tough when the best action set piece is in the middle of the movie. How do you eclipse that? But I enjoyed the opening. It yeah, I think sequence. it did. So that's what I was gonna say. I c- I'm sitting down to watch this RR because the listeners have it uh, ridiculously high mm-hmm. on their movies of the year so far. And uh, there's a couple scenes, a couple shots. I'm like, oh, no, what is this? This doesn't look good. Like, what? what is this movie going to fucking be? Highly stylized. And then there's a very highly stylized mm-hmm. uh, thing involving a bullet not being spent on a <laughs> on a young woman. I understood that. By the original Nazis, mm-hmm. also known as the British Empire. Mm-hmm. And then we get to the outpost. And that's where I'm like, holy fuck, I've never seen a movie <laughs> like this before. I quite enjoyed it. Uh, wow, it's good. Yeah. Uh, the, out- well, the outpost scene happens in the first 10, 15 minutes. It's probably of the movie. this like, third or fourth scene mm-hmm. of the movie. And that's where we see him with his stash. And I'm, I was getting chills watching it throughout that scene. And it's so. Uh, th- they pull off the melodrama so well, where it's just. You, I, I can't explain it. Well, you buy in completely. It's you so obs- It's so over the top. And so absurd with the music and all of that. Where you normally you think this is so much that I, I hate this. Yes, Fuck this. it's you're a, trying it's so, so many hard. things that I hate, but they're all done uh, so in, in unison. The and synergy of and it. And the one word that I kept thinking of was just this is just righteous. <laughs> this is just yeah. it's so strong. It, it picks you a lane, picks the tone, and just goes with it. Never, never, never relents. It doesn't, and it it earns. You hear epic a lot. This thing is fucking epic. And what I one of the things that was most impressive about it, what I was starting to say, is you know, action sequence and whatnot. The story was fucking magnificent. Like that, how it bobbed and weaved, and I didn't know where it was going to go. And then it, it was biblical. Well, there's no there action the, for yeah. like an hour in the middle. That but I, I forgot about it until it started again. And I was like, oh yeah, holy shit! Th- but the th- story was so good. I was like, yeah. holy shit! They're gonna. I didn't even see that coming, even it though was, it was right there. And it was so good. I lost track of time several times, but I was. And then in a big action sequence, what happened? And I'm like, well, that's got to be the end of the movie. And I'm like, nope, there's 40 more minutes. Yeah, and I remember. I paused one time, and I was like, holy shit, this is halfway through. Uh this is like not since uh, uh, like the good, the bad, the weird. If you saw that uh, from Ji Woon Kim's, uh, the guy that did uh, I saw the devil. That was the last time I saw a foreign language film that was completely off the radar. Mm-hmm. That I that was epic. That I absolutely loved. That was like. Uh, um, a Korean take on the uh, Spaghetti Western, which was really good. The Good, the Bad, the Weird is really, really good. I uh, had a little blood in, blood out as far as its epic nature, mm-hmm. right? A little bit of Vatos Locos Forever's feel, I can vibe mm-hmm. to it, but just with amazing action se- sequences. I just, I absolutely love this fucking movie. It's a collection of amazing scenes, one after the other. And if you hate musicals or musical elements, it it works. I'm normally not a big fan of it. I I loved it. They weave in it in. It's so well done. All of it. The end was great. The end was completely really? earned and deserved. It was just a joy. It's joyous filmmaking with some real fucking gore and action and and violence uh, in there for the people that need their violence. There's some real violence in oh there. Oh yeah, I'm agreeing with you on the most part, but the end lost me a little bit. Did it? I mean, the dinner mall, the, the the you know what I mean. It was just a celebration of a f- well-made movie, and they're all enjoying themselves. <laughs> just no, the fuck it, uh, celebrate the country while we're at it. Well, while the credits, yeah. I've now apparently, I've, I've I've done some reading on this, and apparently there is some propaganda and there is oh, some. Yeah. Uh, you think the way things <laughs> with the cast system and whatnot, <laughs> it with it the way things are. It was filmed a little like, uh, it was a little Stalinist and propagandic with uh, <laughs> a little comedy. A little bit, yeah. <laughs> giant figure Or Nate and, yeah. <laughs> and, uh, hey, I mean, who, who are we as Westerners no, to watch? I'm not convinced. Judge. I enjoyed but, the movie. Uh, the use of the score was just fucking impeccable, which you can get on uh, you know most platforms. Like I got it on my old uh, Apple Music. I listened to it in the morning, getting taking a shower, getting ready for, for the day. I, I think I got to play some of those songs at the gym. I think that's the next thing I hurt myself to listening to. It's just they definitely pump you up. You know what's uh, funny is I was listening to it this in morning, the mood. And, uh. and I dropped Atticus off, and then I was doing some work with the music in my ear, and I was doing some uh, studying for this year program, and it was like an hour in, and I realized that it's well off, well off the uh, 
the soundtrack, and I'm just listening to random like, Indian music now. It was like for a good 45 oh, minutes. Yeah. Yeah. It started to suggest stuff. others. Yeah, it just starts playing other stuff. It's kind of like almost it. the only mark against it is I I don't know the lyrics, so I can't sing along. Oh, but if, I, no, no, no. But I I mean, if it was uh, in English and I knew what it sounded like, I could be singing it. It makes yeah, me mad yeah, that like, I can't. True. Sing the song. All the lyrics are right it's on the nose, too. Like, explain oh, yeah. exactly. Now, there's also... But then I thought of it, uh, most songs, if you listen to it, if you didn't speak English and just read yeah. the transcript of the lyrics, I'm you sure go, this is more idiotic. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Because I stopped reading it, because I had that same yeah. issue, where I was reading it, and I was like, you don't this have is making to, you, But I, I was reading it, and I started it. reading it again, because it was kind of funny, too. It went along with yeah. the whole tongue-in-cheek yeah. thing. What does the Beatles, like, love me do sound like? Yeah. Idea? It's like, it sounds not inane. <laughs> Also, 10 minutes in or so, I switched uh, the language that was being, because uh, I was listening to a different soundtrack, uh, language-wise, and I, it was yeah. they were actually dubbing the English-speaking parts, which was distracting, so I switched over to, I think, Hindi, and that gave me the English speakers were actually speaking English, so I didn't have to yes. read their subtitles. and my, mine defaulted to Portuguese. Yeah, that's what it was. Yeah, it was Portuguese. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, so I had to switch it over to Hindi. I don't well, think it was that for me. But were they speaking English at all in the movie, or was yeah. it all okay? Well, no, the English characters. Were speaking but they English. did because yeah, in the Portuguese no. version, they weren't at all. Netflix and I was like, was what doing the that hell for me is too. going on? <laughs> yeah, Netflix did that for me as well. I don't know why. Uh, RRR initially was just a working title, uh, standing for the director's name, uh, Rajamuli, and the uh, two main leads, which were uh, yeah, Ram Sharan Keha and NT Rama Ra Rao Junior. I think I. I, I knew That's that. perfect. Rom's got a. He, how is he not a movie star here yet? I don't that know. guy is charismatic with the stash. They both are. Yes, like the guy with the stash is like fucking. He's a Hollywood star. Yeah, he's yeah. a Hollywood star. Like get that guy over. Like he I don't could be a steal Bond, him. He could be a Bond villain. No, he could be a fucking hero. I'll go anywhere with that guy. That guy could lead me in a battle any day. Some more juicy part. Jesus Christ, Brian. This was the third highest grossing Indian film ever. Hmm. Behind what? I didn't get the other two. Uh, the, uh, the 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 transla- the little translation of the title uh, Ra- Raudra uh, Ranra uh, Rudram is uh, Rage, War, and Blood. It's in uh, tel- Telugu, 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 uh, and has been re uh, engi- reverse engineered to mean Rise, Roar, Revolt. Rise, in English. Roar. Yes. Yeah, so it's Bahubali, the beginning, uh, which is a 2015 movie by the same director. Which a very with a very very similar look, and that's is, this is an eight point oh. Oh man, uh, just the still from that was great. Two hours and thirty nine minutes, right? That's the the first half of that movie, and then the second half is Rahu Rahu Bali Rahu Bali to the conclusion, which is an additional two hours and forty seven minutes. So we got any of the uh, same cast? I don't think so, because the cast was great, but this one's eight point two on the old IMDb, which for me. Unless it's my own movie, uh, is a is a more especially with a lot of ratings, like it's got over a hundred thousand ratings, uh, tells me that this is on par. It's, it, I I I like that as a marker more than uh, the old Rotten Tomatoes. Three R's. Three R's. That's what I'm gonna call it. Uh, R R R Triple R uh, is an eight point as well, so that gives you an idea. With Enjoyable. Yeah. Fuck, I love this movie. <laughs> uh, it's just it's just pure cinematic joy. Yeah, it, it is unbridled. That's the last time I felt like it was just this much cinematic joy was Licorice Pizza, but it was a completely different vibe and for a different <laughs> reason. But Licorice Pizza similar. is just cinematic joy. Uh, yeah, but I can't remember the last time I rooted for the main character as much as I have Both in this. Them. Both of them. Yeah. They yeah. just along for the ride, like, just do it. Get them. And the story just it was so, just all the little nooks and crannies with the other guys. And, and the there's, a, there's snake some... And like there's some brutality in this movie. There's the torture scene or the, the whipping scene, yeah. flogging, whatever. Yeah. Yeah. The villain was great. He was weirdly he really seemed was like fantastic. the only white actor who knew what movie he was in. Mm-hmm. Uh, the rest <laughs> of them were kind of <laughs> in between, which I thought was odd because because you always talk about how that's the job of the director is to get a great performance. So it's like, what's he telling him that he's not telling? Well, I mean, maybe there's a language barrier with it because he d- he did use actual English actors and whatnot who weren't from the Tollywood system. So I yeah, think maybe that could be part of it. And she, the the lead, uh, the the good white lady, yeah, she had to leave because of COVID concerns or something. Like she didn't shoot a number of her scenes, so I think there was more to her story. Oh it did yeah, seem yeah. like she kind of just disappeared, right? Yeah. Allison Duty was the uh, wife who was not, not so nice. You said S- like her, sh- I could not buy her. She was probably the weakest point for me. A little bit. Uh, she was little one dimensional. Yeah, she yeah. has the blood. I couldn't tell. Like she, I, th- I thought that was poor directing. I mean, all the all the the white empire. I, I, 
but he was so go- he was so absurd and over the top, but it worked because mm-hmm. it was almost like he knew what he was doing. She, I just couldn't tell. I like the portly guy who threw the girl back into the into the house. The guy with the beard that beats him, flogs him. Oh, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. At the, the motorcycle shop, and then he gets out. Uh, yeah, I liked him. Like he works too. Yeah, the the wife. I don't know what she was just. She was a bit much, or or almost not enough. Like she didn't yeah, she know what she was doing. I just, you know, I think I think we were having a hard time seeing a woman want that much brutality and get off on it, and she didn't seem to be that type of woman. Like it didn't add up. I mean, she might have been evil and like uncaring, but I didn't believe that she Her wanted to watch lost. torture and get off on it. You know, like yeah, she, didn't, she wasn't. She wasn't a witch. That seemed written. Which she needed yeah. to be. Yeah, it was odd. Yeah. All right. Fuck, yeah. I love this movie. <laughs> <laughs> like, give me this movie. Hey, as 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 fine as the Marvel movies are, this movie is so much more interesting to me. Like, I actually cared about the characters. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. And I, I care about some. You know, the Hulk. I hope he doesn't get a, a, a boo boo. But I mean, these fucking guys, I cared about. The one guy who can't get a boo boo. I mean, not can't Thor. I, I, I'm not too worried about Thor. But just the the choreography for the action and how it's almost like every swing of a weapon is inventive. Yeah. It's like they don't bail in a single kill or, or blow or They've anything. They've spent so much energy making sure that this everything that was on the screen was creative and a little bit outside the box almost. Yeah. Like reinvented. Uh, yeah. If we, if, we, if we haven't oversold this yet, uh, maybe we sit down and watch it with you. Oh, no. I'm, I'm thinking not doing a three-hour watch. We watch long. this next Your month. Your camera won't <laughs> hold up. All right, we're going to use these plugins. Plug it in, in, plug it in. I'm just uh, afraid that the listeners haven't watched it yet, and uh, they, they should. And we're overselling it. R, R, R. I don't think it even gets any recognition at the award shows because, I, I, you know, it's two years old. COVID fucked it all up. Yeah, when did this actually come out in India? I'll tell you that right now. Do you think this would have won Best here. Foreign Film? I don't think it would have even been nominated, honestly. I don't know if they would have got in there. Who knows? Maybe uh, it's not too late. I don't know. Let's see. Yeah, 2022 is actually how it's showing I was going to say, it's actually the Hollywood Critics Association Mid-Season Film Awards uh, had it nominated for Best Picture. I would love to see this be a Best best Foreign Language Film. Best Foreign Language Picture or Best Picture overall? Damn. Best International, right? Uh, It just says Best Picture. But I'm not seeing... I thought that it got released in India. I can't... I I think it got released in India like last year or the year before. IMDb is not giving me nothing on this. All right, let's get out of here. No, I'm gonna stick around. One of the most enjoyable movies oh, I've ever house. I've ever seen, as far as just I, I didn't even tell you I was crying throughout the fucking movie. Did I tell you guys that? No, crying. So apologies, I get it. apologies to everyone who uh, was giving me shit about the Gray Man. It makes sense now. Anyone who watched RRR and then watched the Gray Man for those of you who like follow Netflix and watch whatever they feed you, Bruce, you watch RRR and then. You watch the Gray Man. I get this move. RR ruined me for action movies for a you, while. You got to watch. Uh, uh, my roommate who watches with me show me videos of people in India reacting to it in the theaters and just losing the their fucking. There's like fireworks in the theaters. <laughs> people are throwing confetti and dancing. It's the That's craziest. Uh, I want to see it there. Anderson, as far as I can tell, it, it is released worldwide this year. It was really scheduled to release July of 2020, and obviously that didn't happen. I thought for sure that I saw that it was released in India last uh, whatever. But I hope I hope that's the case, and I really hope that it's up for Best International Picture because I mean it absolutely deserves it. Like, it should be up for Best Fucking Picture. Fuck all that. Yeah. I don't know if if it being a Netflix, you know, release over here, and I, who knows, who knows. But like I remember really wanting Fury Road to be up for Best Picture, and uh, this one over here going, you know, it, it might, but it'll probably miss out to World War Z. It will probably be up for Best. <laughs> I was wrong about that. This this movie deserves to be up for not only best uh, international, but best 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 fucking picture. However, there are some politics in there that maybe you know mm. you don't want to. Uh, what are you gonna do? Does this echo on the bunny man? Please, everybody. Sounds a little like it. it yeah. Does sound a little bit like it. However, in fact, it is so Sons of August. Thank you, Sons of August, for being our featured artist of this week. Check them out, AndersonandBrian.com. Mm. That is where you go to tap the Amazon banner. Do uh, whatever, whatever shopping you're going to do and give us a little bit on the back end. And when I say give us, it costs you nothing. So thanks. Instagram, Anderson and Brian. Facebook, Twitter, The Film Vault. Thank you to our Patreon listeners. Uh, thanks to Giovanni, Jordan Wolf, Mitch Burns, and of course, Michael. 
Addie's Antiques continues to pump out the goodies. Check out Addie's Antiques. You have a website or is all Facebook? Uh, no, website's coming soon. I got to finish. Oh, uh, and I, I fucked this up. It's actually the Heatheners. I forgot to copy and paste. Oh, come on. Oh, the August. Heathers, the Heathers. The Heathers. Last week was Sons of August. And the check Heathers. out our YouTube uh, channel, another way to consume the show and the fun little uh, bits from the show. Uh, if we'll this be will be up, there. you can watch it. Uh, you can go back and rewatch, which I do not recommend. Yeah, and I'm going to pull a clip from our live watch along where uh, we were talking yeah. about autofocus and how inappropriate it was watching. We had to watch a sex scene, or actually a nude scene, I should say. Oh, you know what? Fuck! I was reading some of those uh, comments. <laughs> he has to write stuff down, buddy. I meant to, I meant to actually... This is why I picked a five-minute and 45-second 45 45 song for the nice, end of this. Nice, well done. I meant to task you with this, Brian, to uh, nope. pull some of the uh, quotes from some of the, uh, the the people that watched along mm-hmm. with us. Some really funny qu- quotes, some very nice quotes, uh, especially towards the end of the show, how much, how, how much they enjoyed themselves. The listening audience... Collectively, anyways, are so much smarter than uh, than we are. So they pick up on all these things That's together. And well, they pay attention. They're not talking to a bunch of idiots. Well, also, they're just uh, any group is going to be more smarter than whoever you know. True. Is. So it's it's, it's a fun way to watch a, uh, a movie, and uh, I had a lot of time, uh, a lot, a really good time. Uh, for, so thanks for every, everyone. It for was a great showing time. Up. Yeah, cheers. Best time yet. I enjoyed a sip of whiskey. And uh, there is a scene, Avery, where uh, Brian and I are watching two young naked girls uh, in tanning booths, as you might be aware of, and it was uncomfortable, and Brian kept touching me. <laughs> so I'm going to I'm gonna pull that, that clip. His favorite scene? I was touching myself earlier. All right. All right. Spire the list, coming up. Uh, uh, Avery's podcast, Invade the Decade, is out there. Find that wherever uh, mediocre podcasts are sold. <laughs> and uh, any dates coming up? Uh, I think, yes. I have a date this Thursday, so as you're listening to this, it'll be tomorrow. All right. At uh, Can't Even Comedy, 7 p.m. for free at Mama Shelter. And then nice. your video is still available, right? Yes, it is. If anyone can see that. On YouTube. On YouTube. Can't Even Comedy's channel. Mm-hmm. Can't Even Comedy. All right. Can't even. All right, thanks for the long song, Avery and the Heatheners. Uh, and until next time. We do it for Van Gogh.